Hey everybody, and welcome to another JASP tutorial. In this tutorial, this is sort of an update to the one sample t-test that has previously been on my channel from last year or the year before. I don't remember exactly when it, it popped onto the channel, but we did one sample t-tests already. So in this one, there's been an update, which is a critical update because it's a way for JASP, specifically JASP, as well as other uh, free programs based on our infrastructure, to pull away from the industry grasp of SPSS, which has some of the worst functionality in t-tests, specifically for classic or frequentist statistics. It has some of the worst um, options for it. And specifically, one sample t-tests are bad, very, very bad. But in this particular update, 0 0.15, that's the version we are using for this video. We'll jump into some data in just a second. Specifically in this new version, uh, the, f the developers added uh, a couple more options to the one sample t-test, which I want to talk about in this video. And the major one is adding effect size. So previously, you could only get effect size estimates if you were doing uh, independent samples t-test or paired samples t-test, which, you know, makes some amount of sense. But that still doesn't take away the fact that one sample t-test still could use an effect size uh, measurement given to the user right away. So let's open up some data and um, explore some of these new options for specifically one sample t-tests. So let's go up to the hamburger menu here. Um, again, this is a fresh open of JASP. So when I click on that hamburger menu, it wants me to open some data. So we're going to go to the data library so you can follow along. Um, and then we're going to go to t-tests and we're going to find one that is just for a one sample t-test. Yes, I believe I knew there was one. It's down here at the bottom because I believe they are in, yeah, they're in alphabetical order by title. So this is the weight gain from Moore, McCabe, and Craig. Um, so we are going to use this file instead of opening the full JASP file. Again, I'm just going to open the CSV. If you want to learn more about the JASP file itself, click on the one with the J. Okay, very small data set. Um, and we only have uh, three variables here. We have weight before, weight after, and difference. And I'm just going to, because I don't really need to know about this data set in the background of this, I just need to pick a value for the difference or for the comparison on the one sample t-test. I'm not super concerned about, you know, getting this accurate or anything like that. So we are going to do a one sample t-test. So again, we do that through t-tests. <laughs> Shocking, right? And we're going to go down to one sample t-test here. And we are going to, uh, then this is going to open. Okay. And so here we have our one sample t-test. Again, um, I, I said in a previous uh, video, I'll, I'll link that here as a card. Um, you can do a student t-test, a Wilcoxon signed rank, which is the non-parametric test, or you can do the z-test if you know what the standard deviation is. So you could use this to do your z-test homework <laughs> or do your or check your z-test math. Uh, but we're going to leave it as student because honestly, that's all we're concerned about here is I'm just going to do the difference and I'm going to use a test value that the difference should be. Uh, or yeah, I guess we're going to we'll compare the difference from zero because most of the time, if you have a difference variable, you are going to compare it from no change for a null hypothesis. So we are going to compare it to zero. Um, and we are going to see whether or not the average of uh, weight difference is different from zero. I'm not going to change any of these, although you can do a rain cloud and you can display it horizontally, which is nice, um, where it puts the, oh, that's what I forgot to do in the other video. <laughs> Look at me. Um, you can display it horizontally um, where you get the distribution, the box and whisker plot here, and our jigger on the x-axis. So this is difference and zero over here. But of course, we wouldn't want zero here. So I'm going to actually edit this image and say that the x-axis should just be from zero. That'll look nicer. Okay. Well, anyways, this is not the rain cloud plot, but you can make it just look like it's zero. Anyways, I was here for effect size, and I do also want the confidence interval for effect size. And what this is going to give us is the Cohen's D, Cohen's D, okay, which gives us a difference between means, essentially uh, an absolute difference divided by the standard deviation of the mean, okay? Standard, excuse me, standard deviation of the uh, distribution, right? So we have a massive effect here because here we are, uh, here we're comparing this mean, which is somewhere around here. Let me get my descriptives up so we can see what that mean actually is. The mean is 10.41. So 10.41 is right here, right? The median is a little to the um, positive of that. So it's median looks like 11 or so. We have to get, um, we have to do an actual descriptives thing to get the median in the mode. But say the mean is right here because it's being pulled by some outliers, right? Or some lower range scores. So the mean's right here, okay? And zero is all the way over here. So we have a massive difference in effect size, right? So we are using Cohen's D here. And then this is the 95% confidence interval for Cohen's D. So previously, you were not, uh, previous versions of JASP, you were not able to do this. This is something completely new, and it's definitely something worth it, okay? So that is how you add effect sizes to your one sample t-test uh, module. That's going to be it for this uh, video. If you like this video, consider, consider leaving a like. If you like this content, consider subscribing for more JASP tutorials. Thanks for watching.